Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicLessons.com. Today I want to show you how to put together our um, super capacitor battery kit uh, slash charger. Uh, I have another video that gives a full demonstration, but what we'll do is we'll put this together piece by piece and uh, then we'll do with another quick demonstration and the video will end. So let me just introduce you to the parts. You got a custom PCB, voltage display module, two uh, 400 farad um, 2.7 volt caps, Three 10K resistors, one 470 ohm resistor, two 1N4001 diodes, um, two 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitors, one 78L, or sorry, 7805 5 volt regulator, a two pin terminal block, um, a single red LED, three millimeter, two electrolytic 0 0.1, or sorry, two ceramic 0 0.1 microfarad capacitors, a 2N2222 transistor, DC input jack, 5 millimeter, uh, the program microcontroller, and underneath is a uh, is your uh, socket, a an 18 ohm resist power resistor, and a 5 volt relay. So first of all, what we can do is we can put in our resistors. We're actually going to save our power resistor for for later on because it can be kind of a nuisance if you put it in too early. All the footprints are labeled. R5 right here is labeled R510K. R2, 470R, so our single 470 ohm resistor goes here. Um, R3, 10K. R4, 10K. So populate those resistors. Um, resistors are, do not have uh, polarity, so we can place them in either way. After that, uh, what we can do is we can also do our, our uh, capacitors. Now we've got two kinds of capacitors here. Again, the 0 0.1 microfarad um, ceramics and the 100 my microfarad electrolytics. The two ceramics go into the T suit C2 slot and the C4 slot, labeled um, C2 0.1U and uh, C4 0.1U. Now they don't have a polarization; they're not electrolytic. They it doesn't matter which way they go in. The electrolytics on the other hand have a short lead and a long lead. Now they go into uh, the C3 and C1 slots. Now on the board it's labeled. Uh, one or 10U, 10 microfarad, but it actually should be, uh, it, it doesn't really matter that much, but uh, I'm including 100, so disregard the, uh, the footprint saying 10 micro. Anyway, um, the long lead is the positive lead, the short lead is the negative lead. On both footprints, there is a, a plus sign. In this case, in C3, it's on the left from this perspective, and in the case of C1, it's on the right, the lower right from this perspective. Make sure that your, your long leads go into the positive slots and that your negative leads, your shorter leads, go into the, uh, the other slot. If you turn them around and you power it on, you might pop them and nobody wants that. So let's solder those into place and uh, next we'll do our transistor and our, uh, our LED and our diodes. The diodes are uh, very, very important that you, you pay attention to detail here because if you turn these around, your circuit will not charge. Um, on the diodes, it might be hard to see from here, but on one side there's a white line and on the other side it's just black. On the footprint, D1 and D2, there's a white line at one end and uh, nothing at the other. The white line is the indicator of the uh, cathode, the negative, and the white line on the uh, diodes are your, your cathode, your negative. From a bird's eye view, make sure that the white lines on the diodes line up with the white lines on the, on the footprints. So in this case, the white line of the diode would be facing the left, and uh, in this case, the white line of the diode would be facing, facing the bottom from this perspective, facing where the voltage display is going to go. So solder those into place. Really double check that. Uh, the transistor right here uh, goes into the T1, 2N2222 slot. Now, there is a flat side of the footprint and a curved side of the footprint. The transistor has a flat side with writing on it and a curved side. From a bird's eye view, when you place it, and make sure that the curved side is facing the curved side and that the flat side is facing the flat side. I'm going to turn this around. The LED, the single LED, goes in the LED1 slot. Um, the side, there's a short lead and a long lead on the LED. Short lead is negative or a cathode. Long lead is positive or anode. And uh, you want to place the negative, the short lead, on the right from this perspective, facing the LED1, like the LED1 footprint right here. And you want to put your positive, your long lead, 
in the left. You turn that, if you turn that around, your LED will not light up, and you will have no indicator LED. The circuit will still work, but you'll have no indicator LED. So solder those components into place, and then we will do our uh, DC jack, our terminal block, and our um, 7805, uh, 7805 regulator. The terminal block has a uh, side with two screw terminals on it, and just a plastic backing. Make sure that the screw terminals are facing outwards. Don't make them facing inwards. It would be a bad mistake. Uh, make sure it's flush to the board and soldered in. The DC jack has three pins. It really only fits in one way. Uh, now, when you solder it, make sure that enough solder gets on all three leads. The holes are very big. Um, you don't have to, if you spend too much time soldering that uh, and apply too much heat, you might melt. Uh, you might melt the jacks. Be very careful. Uh, and your regulator. Your regulator has a uh, a metal side, which is essentially the ground and uh, the front side that has writing on it. Make sure that the ground side faces the, the white stripe, so place it in like this. Don't place that in backwards or else your circuit will not work. That's regulating everything to 5 volts to power the digital circuitry. So solder those all into place. Make sure the regulator is flush with the board and, uh, and we'll move on to the relay, the socket, and the uh, power resistor. The power resistor, no polarity, doesn't matter. Uh, carefully place it into the R1 slot, which is labeled 18R5W for 5 watts. Um, make sure that it's about 2 centimeters above the board, maybe a centimeter and a half to 2 centimeters above the board. You do not want, you can't get this flush for one thing, you can't get it flush down to the board, but you want to leave some space because this resistor is limiting the charge to your capacitors, uh, your supercapacitors, and it will get hot. So that's something you want to avoid uh, touching during charge. Um, the socket, if you noticed on the footprint, the socket footprint IC2 pick 10F222, there's a notch on the left. There's a notch on the left of the socket, there's a notch on the left of the pick. Make sure from a bird's eye view that you place the notch, that you line up the notches, like so, uh, or else if you, if you, if you reverse it, again, if I, the notch is on the left, if I take the, the notch of the pick and I turn it around, uh, I'll fry the chip. So make sure that you, from a bird's eye view, notch, notch, notch. That said, the relay is very easy. It's got five pins. It only fits in one way. And it should fit right in. You want to make sure that your solder joints are very strong. And again, on the socket, make sure that there's no shorts. If there are shorts, you're going to have problems. Next, we will do the uh, voltage display and the supercapacitors. The voltage display has two pins on each side at least in this configuration. Two pins on each side. So if you look at it from the front, you'll notice that the bottom has little uh, decimal points. You want to make sure that that is facing, the re those decimal points are facing the relay. Now there's two, two holes right here and two holes right here. You might take some fiddling, but they do fit. Um, it won't be able to be flush with the board because there is a potentiometer there, as you can see, a calibration. Don't touch that. Um, so place that in. Make sure it's even, solder it into place. Be very careful, and if, again, if you if you turn this around, your circuit's not going to work. So decimal points facing the relay. Your supercapacitor is the last step before we test. The uh, the two supercapacitors are, are right here, and there's a plus and negative sign on both of them. On the top are the plus signs, and on the bottom are the minus signs. The supercapacitor. How you know it, the, the, the negative side is the side with the stripe on it, the negative side. So what you want to do is make sure that the negative side on both of them is facing the bottom of the board. Um, if you turn that around, you are going to damage them immediately when you charge them. Make sure that the side with the negative stripe goes into the negative holes. So I'll solder those into place, we'll have a look at the board, and then we'll use our 9 volt adapter to power it up and charge it. I've turned off the lights so you can see the display better. Now I can see it when the light's on, but I'm not sure how well the camera will pick it up. So when you plug the your 9 volt adapter in, right into the DC jack, uh, what'll happen is the, this thing will go through kind of a little calibration uh, session and then it will uh, you'll hear the uh, relay click. You, this the LED will blink three times. The relay will click, and it will start charging. And then we will see the voltage on our capacitors. Now, when the voltage uh, on the capacitors reaches roughly 5.33 volts, um, what will happen is the the LED will flash three times again. The relay will click off. 
completely disengaging uh, the, the capacitors from the rest of the circuit. So there's no back powering. And uh, then the voltage display will display the input voltage, which should be roughly 9 volts. At which point you can access your supercapacitor uh, power via this terminal block. There's V plus and ground. So let's power it up. There we go. 0.44 volts. Now, the first time you charge this up, um, from basically next to nothing on the capacitors, it'll take about half an hour, 40 minutes. Uh, depending on what you do with it after, if you fully drain it, you know, it'll take that amount every time, but if you put a voltage booster on it, say, ch deplete the voltage down to 3 volts, and to recharge back up between, say, 2.5 and 3 volts, back to 5.4 volts, doesn't take very long, 15 minutes, about... So, it's fun, you can power your radio with this. If you have a solar panel that's capable, you have to use 9 volts. If you have a 9 volt solar panel that can support uh, about 700 milliamps minimum, you can actually use uh, that solar panel to charge this beast. And uh, again, uh, this will power my, my clock radio, it'll power motors, uh, tons of power on this thing. The bank is five point is rated for five point four volts at two hundred ferrets. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Uh, uh, thanks for watching, everyone.